Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got another fanless PC to take a look at today. This one is the Leva X, and this is very similar uh, in performance to the Gigabyte Bricks that we looked at about a year ago and spent a lot of time on. So if you're curious about how different apps might function on a PC configured like this one, uh, check out that series because this will largely perform the same. Uh, we are going to run through our normal barrage of tests on this, so don't worry, but all the uh, other things that we did with the Bricks, uh, you'll likely see the same performance out of this one as you saw with that one. So let's step through the hardware first and then we'll show you some ways this uh, differentiates itself a little bit uh, from the bricks. So on the front, you've got your USB ports, two USB 2.0 ports and one USB 3 port. You get the power button there as well. Again, this is fanless, so they have some vents on both sides to uh, keep the air flowing in and out of it without a fan, of course, uh, but you can uh, lock it down with a Kensington lock there. And they also give you a vase mount so you can put it on the back of a monitor also if you don't want to have it uh, sitting on a desk by itself. On the back, you've got VGA, headphones, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, and power. Now, the way they differentiate these is that they come pretty much pre-configured. So this one uh, is the model that comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now, you can add an mSATA drive to it, and underneath the motherboard, you have to take the whole thing out, uh, there is a uh, mSATA slot so you can put in another SSD if you want. Now, if you want to run Windows 7, you're going to have to put that mSATA drive in there because it won't boot off the eMMC. Uh, so if you are a Windows 7 user, you'll have to pay a little bit extra uh, to get that drive there. This configured, as you see it right now, is $250 at Newegg. Uh, they have another version that's $145, but it comes with two gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC. As you can see, the RAM is soldered on, so you are not going to uh, be able to change or upgrade the RAM. So when you buy this with four gigs, that is it. You are locked in uh, for life with that amount of RAM. There is also a version of the two gigabyte model that comes loaded with uh, Windows 8.1 for Bing. Uh, for about $229, uh, $229. So you don't get the operating system with this one either, so you're going to have to pay for that uh, later to add it on. Uh, so when you boot it up, it just comes up through the BIOS screen, uh, so you'll have to get that OS uh, from Microsoft and purchase it. So I'm going to put this thing back together, and we're going to step through some of its performance. All right, let's check its boot up speed. It does take a little bit longer than most systems because it actually pauses to ask you if you want to go into the BIOS setup, which we're not going to do at the moment, but you can see at the bottom there, uh, we can hit the delete key and just pop into the BIOS menu. But once it clears that, uh, the boot up speed is actually about what you would see out of other PCs in its class. So we'll let it go to do its thing. And there we are. So we'll just log in real quick and uh, pop in and do some stuff in here. So the first thing we'll do, I think, is load up a web browser and just see how uh, it performs on the web. So we'll pull up our uh, usual test here. We'll go pop over to the New York Times or something and just see how fast that pops up. And you can see here it just... Uh, Runs pretty nicely, actually. It's a nice little web browsing experience on here. We'll load up my YouTube page as well, and we'll see how that functions. Uh, the uh, Octane test, which is something I run on all of my devices, uh, has this coming in at about 7,497. So that is under the HP Stream Mini, which is that $179 uh, PC from HP that we looked at, but it's still pretty decent for a fanless PC, which this one is and the HP isn't. All right, let's see how it performs with Microsoft Word. I like to run Word 2010 versus the uh, newer version because 2010 doesn't have the text animation that makes things look slower. So I'm just gonna scroll through this uh, set of pages here. As you can see, it actually renders pretty nicely. This is a pretty complicated uh, newsletter template in that it has a lot of photos and a lot of things to render on the screen. And I'll pull up now my keyboard here so you can see me typing. Uh, and how those words appear on the screen versus when I type, if I can even type my name correctly here. Uh, but you can see it does a pretty nice job of uh, running Microsoft Word there. So uh, not a bad way to get some word processing done. We're also uh, running at 1080p here as well, so you can kind of get a feel for uh, how it'll perform in some real-world applications. All right, here we are running Minecraft with the Optifine enabled. I did actually leave the settings in a pretty high state, so this is a good example of pretty much the max you'll get out of it. Uh, with some decent looking graphics here. So we're about, uh, about 25, 30 frames per second, give or take. So not too bad on that front. Of course, when we get into the more complex rendering uh, is when it starts to slow down, especially when it's drawing in as we're moving. So you'll see a couple little uh, dips in frame rate there and a little sluggishness, but uh, not bad. And I think if we really turn these settings down, we'll get a better performance out of it. The atom based machines do perform a little bit better with the same plugin. And I think that might be because they have a quad core processor versus only a dual core on this one. So how does the eMMC perform? Let's take a look. You can see here we're getting about 60 megabytes per second on the right side, 
and about 162 megabytes per second in the read side. So I did see the writes uh, performing a little bit better earlier. And it's funny, whenever I turn the camera on, sometimes these devices get nervous and slow down. So I was seeing slightly higher writes uh, a little bit earlier this afternoon, but uh, you can get a feel for what the maximum throughput of that uh, EMMC is. So that is the Leva X, and I want to thank the folks uh, at Leva for letting us borrow this for a couple of days. A decent little computer. Uh, again, it performs pretty much the same as the Gigabyte Bricks in just about every area we tested, uh, but the difference is really that you get this thing already set up and ready to go when you buy it. So you don't have to go buy the unit and then buy the RAM and the hard drive. You can get it all installed uh, right when you take it out of the box, install your operating system on it, and you are uh, off and running. So it does get a little bit warm while it's operating, but it's not alarmingly so and again these chips really do self-regulate so if it does get too hot it will turn down the performance to prevent uh, any kind of overheating or anything like that so it's kind of nice to have you know a Windows PC that can run either on the back of your monitor or on the desk and make absolutely zero noise and perform well enough to do a lot of the basic tasks that you would do with a computer so uh, that is the Leva X and this is Lon Sivan thanks for watching